Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. If you're wondering where all of the Christmas content is, the events, the challenges, all of that cool stuff, go over and check out my wife's new channel. It's called Rain's Place, and we've got all of that fun over there. We are doing the 13 days of Christmas, so a lot of traditional Christmas vlog content over there. Come on over, subscribe, check out our videos. Yesterday, I did a terrible game called Treat or Meat, and let's just say that <laughs> I chose wisely on some and not so wisely on others. Anyway, today's show has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with a one-by-one -one record player. You are not going to want to miss this. And actually, truth be told, this is a turntable, not a record player, because it does not have built-in speakers. Therefore, it meets the qualification of what I consider a turntable. Okay, this is the one-by-one. One. If this looks oddly familiar, I believe we have seen this product branded as some of your other favorite brands, but this one is by one-by-one. By one. Now, I've been making a point lately not to spend a lot of time looking at boxes. But I want to take a minute to look at this. Now, I paid for this. This is not sponsored. This is not even a product sample. This is something I just bought off of Amazon. By the way, $159 right now, normally $199. Keep that in mind as we evaluate it. But I was blown away by this warranty. So a two-year warranty and a 90-day refund guarantee. That's not half bad at all. Okay, time to get into this. Okay, man, that works good. I should have done that a lot sooner. So we've got everything here. Let's kind of take a look at all the goodies we got. All right, we're going to start with this. So we've got a USB cable. This looks like an owner's manual, but there looks like there's something else in here besides just the owner's manual. Here's the manual itself. So, okay, we got some illustrations in there, which is good. I think that's a good thing. This is the anti-skate weight. Oh, I need to use some lotion or something. Jeez. This is a tool to help with the belt alignment. I'll show you how to use that a little bit later. Here's the 45 adapter. Coming soon, Recordology adapters in a variety of collectible colors. Stay tuned for more on that. And then also there is this live chat anytime piece of paper kind of telling you how you can get a hold of support. Sounds like they've got support, which is good. It's like they have good support. Okay, so here's our platter, some protective cardboard, and the unit itself. I'll just go ahead and toss that piece on the floor. They also include a quick start guide, illustrated, which is great. Dust cover, it looks like it's a clear acrylic dust cover. And the unit is braced in these foam blocks here. Got something over here, power supply. Just, okay, so there's our DC power supply. All right, let me go ahead and get it out of the uh, foam blocks and we'll take a closer look. Here's a lesson that people often learn the hard way. Don't throw the foam away without checking for a counterbalance. So the counterbalance is often hidden somewhere in the foam blocks. So in this case, it was no different. So we want to get that out of there for sure. Because you throw that away, you can't use your turntable until you have a counterbalance. So that is highly recommended to not overlook. So remember to keep $159 in the back of your mind. Let's go ahead and remove it from the plastic. Ooh, oh, that is gorgeous. Wow. Wow. First of all, it is heavy. It's quite heavy, actually. That's a promising first impression. This has like a foot thick of varnish on it. It is super smooth, high gloss. Let's see if I can get the effect on there. That is truly a high gloss finish. Wow. That is gorgeous. That looks great. And because of the fact it's not pitch black, piano black, although it is like that type of smooth finish, it's not going to show fingerprints like the black ones do. It's got this wood grain, very reddish looking, kind of like a cherry wood almost. I like it. I like it a lot. So we've got our motor mount back there. We've got our main spindle bearing. And this does rotate. It does spin freely. I mean, you spin it, it just stops the second you let go, but it does spin freely. And our tone arm assembly, so it's a metal tone arm, uh, plastic base, and a metal gimbal assembly. We'll look at that closer in a minute. Controls here. Let's look underneath. 
you can see me in the reflection. It's almost like a mirror. So yeah, this is fantastic. Very familiar. This has three rubber feet. They do have a slight pivot that is good rubber material, but they are screwed directly to the plinth. And three points of contact is always more stable than four. And this is a solid wood plinth. I'm not sure if it's an MDF, some sort of particle board with this amazing laminate. And by the way, if that is a laminate, it's compare that to the contact paper laminate job on that Vox Sun record player from the other day. This is just another level. It's kind of weird being in the reflection this whole time and probably not the part of the body I would, you know, focus my attention on. However, this is either solid wood with an amazing finish on it, or it's the best laminate job I've ever seen. It seems to be sealed on all sides. So there are holes drilled for the two knobs on the front and then a channel. And that's what this panel covers. All the electronics are in a separate box because again, that is a solid piece of wood material. And if you look at it from this angle, you can see how this is just a passive piece of material and all the jacks, all the connections go into that plastic box. Speaking of the back panel, let's take a closer look at that and see what kind of connections and features we have over there. Starting over here, we have the power switch on and off as well as one of the two clips for the dust cover. We'll put that on a little bit later. Everything else is over on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, we do have a grounding post. That way, in case you don't want to use the built-in preamp, you can connect it to your external preamp, or you can just use the RCA output jacks if you're using the built-in one, because then you don't need one. It does have a USB because you can use this to convert your records to vinyl. And this is a good unit to do that with because it has a magnetic cartridge. More on that later. And there we have the power supply, which is 12 volt and a Bluetooth indicator. This transmits Bluetooth. So this sends Bluetooth out and we will test that feature as well. Let's look at the controls on the top. Very interesting. It's a very minimalist design, but I like it. So we got 33 and 45, it is two speed. And then here we've got stop and start. I'm guessing that's simply a motor start and stop for the platter rotation it has nothing to do with, well, we saw the power switch on the back. So we know this is start and stop for the platter itself, fully manual. So this thing doesn't have any automatic features, but you turn this, it'll start the platter. You turn it again, it'll stop it. Actually, that'd be the reverse from what I just showed you, but you get the idea. Let's look at the tone arm assembly and the cartridge. Can't get over how good this thing looks. It's just absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look. The gimbal is solid. Yeah, there's nothing chintzy about this whatsoever. So this, you may be wondering about this, and if you've never seen one of these, it may confuse you a little bit. This is actually the anti-skate hook for the weight. You'll notice there's no knob for the anti-skate. And if you forgot what anti-skate is, Tone arms have a tendency to pull towards the center of the record. So this basically puts a little pressure on the tone arm so that it stays neutral in the groove. And that, that way, the groove itself dictates the position of the tone arm. So this has a anti-skate weight, and I'm going to show you up here. It's a little metal piece with a fish line connected to it. And the way this works is you connect it right here, and there's different notches. And that's how you adjust the settings. And let's see, this thing feels like it's a little short to reach, so it may have to cinch up. Yeah, so see that knot, it's sort of cinching up. And then you just hang it over there. The trick sometimes is getting it to stay in one of these little notches while hanging over the edge, but it does work. Oh, you know what, I just remembered, you're supposed to cinch it up tight, that's the thing. So for now, I'm going to put it in the middle position. I'm going to pull it down tight and then I'm going to cinch it or I'm going to hang it over the edge. So that's how the anti skate works. Some higher end turntables do this. The last time I saw this was on the project made Crosley C10. And yeah, it works fine. I mean, the other kind works as well. It uses a spring, whereas this uses a weight. So this is probably a little bit more precise. And like I said before, you can fine tune it by choosing a different position on these notches as well. But as you can see, what it's doing is it is adding weight so that the tone arm doesn't want to pull inward as much as it was before, because this weight will have a tendency to pull it outward. And it's a matter of compensating in such a way that is a neutral position with the tone arm.
this thing really photographs well. It really, really does. So we've got a clip here that is a thin piece of plastic, but it really does grasp that tone arm well. So if you're storing it or you're moving it around, keep that clamp down there. Otherwise, there is just a sort of a scoop of a tone arm rest. It can be in that position when it's not in use. And then we've got this. I love metal parts. This is great. I mean, we've seen so much plastic stuff lately. I mean, $159. A lot of that plastic stuff, you could spend $159 on those entry-level mechanisms, or you could spend it on something like this. What a difference this makes. So there's the tone arm lift, the cueing lift, and then the shelf back here. It is rubber aligned. First one of those we've seen in some time. I'm going to go ahead and lift the tone arm up so you can see it. If the descend ever gets dried out and the, the fluid needs to be added to it, we've done videos on that. It just goes down that hole. There's a little screw. You can pull that out. Another shot of those knobs. They are metal. Those are real metal knobs. They look fantastic. All right, cartridge is up next. And there she be. That is an Audio-Technica 3600L cartridge. I love the fact that they have proper cartridge wires on the back with the insulation. That is something that you don't see as much as you should. See that rubber, that black rubber around there? It's sort of a heat shrink material, but it acts as an insulator. And it makes sure that the wires don't become detached from the little clips that hold it onto the pins. And trust me, I have pulled many of those out of those clips by grasping on the wire and not doing it properly. So having a little heat shrink around there acting as an insulator is good. So yeah. Great phono cartridge. It's an entry-level magnetic, but it is a magnetic phono cartridge. This one features a black cantilever, and you may be wondering why it's black. Well, it's actually a carbon fiber cantilever, and that's something that they don't advertise about this. You don't ever hear that, but that is indeed a carbon fiber cantilever. Styli on this are you know readily available for you know $10, $12, $15. You can actually buy this and replacement parts for it at walmart which is amazing so yeah that's a great phono cartridge but i do have a gripe i do have a gripe here and i want to show you what i'm talking about my gripe is the fact that it's got this tabbed head shell so instead of having a standard half inch mount or apparently it's an sme mount i've been saying that wrong this whole time but whatever it is half inch mount or sme mount this does not have that removable head shell assembly that allows you to mount cartridges very easily you can upgrade the cartridge on this no problem at all especially with the adjustable tone arm balance as well as the anti-skate but you you have to deal with this sort of tab deal and i'm not sure how adjustable in terms of left and right this is if there's slots underneath these screws or if they're just holes if there's just holes you don't have the ability to adjust the left and right lateral movement very much so that's kind of a bummer. I always prefer the standard removable head shells. That being said, from a styling aesthetic, this is a pretty popular thing to do. And this is a nice, thick metal tone arm. Let's take another look at this. Probably aluminum. It's hefty. It's beefy. It'll do the job. I like this. This is really, really good. And for all my people that love to say Chinese junk, let me just say this is Chinese and it's not junk. So... Let's stop saying that, okay? Another thing we need to do is mount this balance on the back. We didn't do that. We should have done it earlier. We're going to simply rotate it on, and we'll use the old-fashioned method of floating the tone arm where you just find the neutral point where it doesn't go up or down. See how it's pulling back? So the, an the uh, anti-skate setting is it's too strong on this. We probably need to move it further back down the line here. But that's not as important right now. But we need to find the up and down neutral point where it's not going up or down. And once we get that neutral point, I think we're just about there. Right about there. I'm going to put this back into the clip. And then we're going to look over here closely. Now that we know that it is zeroed out, in terms of weight, we can put this plastic piece at the zero position on top. This spins independently of this. And then we rotate the whole thing forward to apply the actual tracking force that we are looking for. In this case, I'm going to put two and a half. So two and a half grams. You know, I'm going to a little more. I'm going to do two and three quarters. This cartridge can handle a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and put two and three quarters down on this. The tracking force is dictated by the cartridge. There's usually a range and then an optimal setting. You can track as light as 2.5 grams with this cartridge. So 
There you go. I'm going to go a little bit higher than that value. One thing that drives me nuts about these kinds of weights, these anti-skate weights, is they're always swinging back there. That drives me nuts. <laughs> so they're not my favorite type. Um, however, they are good. If you see that on your turntable, that's a good thing. Just don't lose the weight because that's something else you'd have to replace. So the platter is aluminum. It is die cast aluminum with a sub platter and a rubber belt. It is obviously belt driven. You'll also notice that there's something around the belt there. And if I flip this over, you'll see that it's a ribbon taped to the top. And this literally is just so that you can easily attach the belt. And we'll use the tool. You can use your fingers as well, especially considering the fact that you've got this helpful ribbon on there. You don't really need that tool, but we can go ahead and gently put our platter on. All right. There's no finger holes. I wish there was some finger holes there. So we've got the balanced openings there. If you stamp something, an opening over here, you need an equal one over here to balance out the weight. Let's go ahead and give this a little spinneroo. Take a look at things. Yeah, that's a good bearing. That keeps going and going and going. Very little drag. A little bit of platter wobble there. Not too terribly bad. Shouldn't be audible. This is all literally spinning off of that first spin. I've just been moving the camera around for these different shots. So this has been going for a good 50 seconds by itself so far. So very impressive. That is a good bearing. It is well lubricated. Yeah, I like it. Let's go ahead and attach the belt next. It just wants to keep going and going and going. That's, that's great. So all you have to do is pull up on this adhesive strip and pull back on the belt they even have it positioned so that it lays the right way on there or this tool is literally designed to go like this so you can hold it back with that tool and remove the ribbon and then just release it and then check it both on this side and that side to make sure that belt isn't twisted one thing i thought was a little odd is it doesn't come with an rca cable i don't know why it's got everything else but i did supply one and we are ready to go I thought we would pause for a moment and just admire again how gorgeous it is. The clear dust cover looks fantastic. It's very sharp. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Wow, I even centered and lined up the logo on the platter mat. Wasn't intending to do that. It does have a little logo plate here as well. Even that's metal. This thing is just quality. The first thing we're gonna do is a speed test. So I'm gonna get my strobe mat and we will check that. Hoping, fingers crossed, it'll be nice and accurate. And it's time for the strobe test. So I'll be looking right here. This will be 33 RPM. I'm going to go ahead and spin it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Now, you may be saying, wait a minute, it's inching to the left. Does that mean it's a little bit fast? Yes, but like I always say, when that needle drops on the record, it's going to introduce a little bit of drag. And this is indeed perfect. Let me flip it to 45, which will be right here. Same thing. That is, I'm going to call that nearly perfect speed. That is great. I love seeing that. Okay, for a music, again, I'm going to be using this Enoch Light Action, Action, Action album. Got a few people curious about this, and they asked who the band was. Enoch Light is the band. That's the artist, and he did some great, great 50s and 60s orchestral music. And the best part about it is I can use it as a test record. So it's very dynamic. It's really fun to listen to. And it makes for a great test record. This is a Project 3 stereo pressing. And again, right now we're just doing a functionality test. We'll do the direct feed in a minute. But I have the speaker hooked up for the ambient in the room so I can hear what's going on. We're going to go ahead and lower this. Look at that gentle, slow descend. Very good. And here we go. Oh, should put it down to 33. I had it on 45 still. Excellent. Now, one thing I want to point out too is, listen to this. I'm going to crank the speaker. There is no signal noise. Dead silence. So very clean amplification. There's no buzz. And this room has a lot of Wi-Fi interference. So usually I get a nasty hum or a, some kind of 60 cycle thing going on in here. But today it's silent and this thing isn't introducing any noise whatsoever. It's dead silent. Okay, next track. Let's go ahead and Keep playing with it here. Sounds good in the room. Again, stay tuned for the direct feed and what happens when we hit the run out groove in the end. It's fully manual, so I'm anticipating there's no auto stop or anything. Hits the end, it just sits there and spins, spins, spins. 
which is what it should do. It's a manual turntable. It is what it is. You have now reached a point in the program where you get to hear this directly. So headphones on if you have them. And we are going to give you a direct feed sound test of what this record player sounds like. wires are disconnected from the unit and from the speaker as you can see only power and we are listening to Bluetooth so the Bluetooth transmit does work sounds good okay I'd say it's a safe bet to say this is a fantastic fantastic turntable as you heard, it sounds fantastic, $159. And even at $199, I think this is a great value. I would consider this an intermediate turntable. A lot of folks would say, no, that's entry level, absolutely entry level. It's all relative, right? So for a VPI person, this is very much entry level. But for somebody that's graduating from a suitcase or an all-in-one, or a lot of the things we've reviewed this month, this would be a nice piece of phonograph equipment that would give them fantastic sound with a very sophisticated styling aesthetic as well. Let me know down in the comments below if you have this or one of the variants branded by other companies. One thing that irked me a little bit, well, two things. One was the fact they don't give you RCA cables. They should. Number two, I wish they would have model numbers and or even model names for these. A lot of these companies are just calling them all you know, turntable or record player or whatever, and you have to really dig for that model number. So it's hard to describe what you have. I've got the one by one record player. Well, there's a ton of them. So which one do you have? I think it would be smart if they would choose to give this some sort of name or easily identifiable model number as other companies have. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. I hope you enjoyed this one. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. Link in the description below if you're interested, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.